Isabella and this tutorial is on ActiveHDL's Library Manager. Here you'll learn how to create and manage your own libraries as well as use any pre-compiled FPGA vendor libraries. The Library Manager can actually be opened at any time, whether you have a workspace open or not. So to find it, you go into View, Library Manager right here. You can also use this keyboard shortcut or select the symbol right underneath. And it'll open up two windows. On the left, you'll see all of the libraries, comments, path, and on the right, you'll see, if you select a library, anything inside it. If you open up the library manager without having a workspace open, it'll show you only global libraries, as denoted by these globes on the side here. So let's open up a design. We're going to use one of the example designs in ActiveHDL. To find them, go into Help, Open Examples, and we want to use the VHDL frequency meter design. Anytime you have a design open, your design browser will show you all your local libraries in bold at the bottom here. You'll also be able to see it in the library manager, denoted by this pin instead of the globe like everything else. Something else you'll notice is that it usually comes in a different mode. The mode tells you whether you can edit or make changes to that library. If it's a normal pencil like this, you can change any of the contents, you can edit it at, at any time. If it has the pencil with the cross next to it, you cannot change that library. We can also add, detach, or create new libraries in one of three ways. If you right click in this window here, you can create, attach, or detach. You also have the symbols right here that you could select from, or this library tab, which is only available when you have the library manager open, lets you attach, create, or detach. Whenever you attach a library, you just find whichever file or whichever library you want and make sure you select the .lib file, then open. By default, it'll attach as a local library and it could or could not be editable. If you want to change it to a global, you could right click and make it global. Or, if you, let me detach this one real fast, you can attach it as a global. How that works is you select the .lib, and then on the bottom here, make sure attach as global library is checked, and then open. When you change it to global, instead of being a pin for local, it will have a global symbol here. We can also create new libraries at any time. So when you create a library, you need to name it. So let's name it uh, test frequency meter. And by default, it wants an empty library. You can deselect this, and here you can add any files you want. So, opening all of this, we can select the files we want and just click add. You'll be able to see everything in here, and actually, I don't want all of those files. Okay, you could see all of the files in here and then just click next and finish. And then it will show up as a local library here. Again, if you want to change it to a global library, you can right click that one and make global. But we could see here we created this new library and by clicking it, we see everything we want in the right side here. Now, you may have noticed there's quite a few options when you right-click a library. So there is Create, Attach, Detach. You can also rename the library to change it to whatever you want. You could change the path to the library, so you'll be able to see the path right here, but you could basically move it around in your own system and, and change the path. Again, you can make it into Global, which will change this pin into one of the globes. and any local libraries shown in the design browser, it will remove that from the design browser if it's global. You can also refresh library. What this does is if you add something or remove something in the right hand side, you want to make sure the library actually updates it and saves that update. So by clicking refresh library, you're recompiling the library and making sure it saves those changes you made. Pushing compact, um, 
makes the size of the library smaller and, and more compact so you can move it and transfer it to different places easier. Now if you click empty, there's actually two different options here. You can delete all units or delete simulation data. If you push delete all units, it removes everything inside the library in, and pretty much changes it from a full to an empty library. If you push delete simulation data, that just removes any simulation, any packages, anything that's not the actual architecture, actual symbols inside. It keeps everything inside the library unless it's a simulation. Through right click, you can also push delete simulation data here. Now read only and read slash write is how you can switch between whether you're allowed to edit it or not. So right now we can see we're, we're able to edit it. If we change to read only, it changes the mode to have this little cross. And if we right click, a lot of the things that we just went over aren't available anymore. Those are only available if you can edit the library. So we can't delete it, we can't change the size, we can't remove any data. If you want to switch it back into a library you can edit, just click the read slash write and you can edit it again. We can also add to symbols toolbox, which will look through your library, look through everything inside it, and if it has any symbols in there, it will add it to the symbols toolbox, which will make it easier to use anytime you need to create a new block diagram or anytime you just need to see the symbol. You can also import, export, and copy symbols, which allows uh, users to swap or transfer symbols between different libraries. Now in the right window here, like I said, this is everything uh, within that library, but it also has quite a few right click options. So if, if the source type is a source code, you can right click that and view source text. What that does is it opens up the source code, in this case VHDL, and shows you exactly what that uh, code is. If it's a block diagram, you could click view source diagram and it'll open up a window to show you the block diagram that it's describing or that was created for it. We also have open symbols and delete symbols. If it was a symbol on the side here, we could open it and view it just like how we viewed the block diagram. It would open up another window and show us the symbol or we could delete the symbol to remove it. We could copy declaration, uh, VHDL, Verilog, and system C uh, instantiations as well. So what that does is if you just copy it and then you know create create a new source code real fast, it ju and just paste it. That's the declaration of whatever you had, whatever you copied. You could also, like I said, copy the instantiations for the different languages as well. You can delete objects in here only if it's allowed to be edited. Again, if you cannot edit the design, you will not be able to delete it. And you can find objects. So finding, if you have a lot of, um, a lot of things inside your library, a lot of diagrams, a lot of code, a lot of symbols, you could just use find to search for whatever you want. So you can have it search by unit name, which would be this tab here. Second unit name, configuration, pretty much whatever. And then it'll try to find, you can have a match case exactly, wildcard, like change the finds like that. And lastly, we have the export and copy symbols, which again, helps uh, allow users to transfer the symbols uh, through different two different libraries and we have all of this allowed and available with um, when we're allowed to edit the libraries if we go into a library that we cannot edit the only thing that changes is we cannot delete we're still able to right click and select any of these other options and that concludes this tutorial on the library manager Thank you for watching.